we we were impressing this upon people months ago when we were saying pre-order this because we will not be ordering a lot of yep. extras, and that still holds true. A two-month event does not have legs of any kind. Legs of any kind. In the Midwest, you know the best is there waiting. So come and join the conversation. Highs to approve, fan and artist and creator too. What? This is how the challenge is too. Keep the conversation moving along. From Challengers Comics and Conversation in Chicago, this is Contest of Challengers, a comics industry business podcast with Patrick Brower and W. Dell Bush. What if you worked in an office? I did work in an office once. What, what would you do in an office? Not what did you do. Mm-hmm. Because, let's face it, you worked in it, you, you worked, you worked, I'm putting air quotes around, mm-hmm. you, you did it by your own admission, an hour's worth of work it's over that. an yeah. eight hour period. Yeah. What, like people that work in offices what do they do all day i honestly don't know reports i guess right it's not usually the thing they're working on reports or I, submitting reports or emails people uh-huh. have their uh collating and filing and indexing and i mean i don't think that's a thing anymore briefing and debriefing Meeting, i know meetings right it's a, a lot of meetings. it's a lot of meetings it's Some a lot of whole. status meetings and what is this person doing and then how does that affect this department and the higher up you are in the company, the more meetings you have overseeing other mm-hmm. people. But who's doing the actual work? What is the actual work? What work gets done? I See, I don't know. And that's why I've always somewhat appreciated working in, in comic shops. Because even though there's a repetitive nature to the tasks, you know, every Tuesday you're doing whatever. Every Wednesday is this. At least there's, like, something to show for it at the end, you know? Like, what is it? Books on the shelves. Or... An email that went out to your subscribers or a thing that you printed out that's on the, the counter. like Ho- Hopefully empty shelves where people bought those books. I mean, eventually, yes. But, yeah. like, there is a, a a sense of accomplishment, even if it's brief or mild, to finishing a task and having it be physical and, and complete. And you brought up something I was going to get at, that while now more than ever... Our days are less repetitive Mm -hmm. because you cannot predict what deliveries come what (laughs) days anymore. You really can't. When everything else was a structure. And even though it was a very specific, like, you know, you have your Monday tasks, your Tuesday tasks, your Wednesday tasks. And it used to be Fridays were a little bit looser to Mm -hmm. do special tasks. But now that's less the case because there's so many deliveries come on Fridays. Yeah. Even small thin boxes from Hasbro come on Fridays. From Amazon? Yeah. Yeah, it might be uh it's it's definitely Transformers toys that I pre ordered that Amazon oh, was releasing. Well gosh. Well, here's the best part. People are saying that It gets uh, better? Yeah, Amazon had two different Transformers two packs that they offered. Uh, I ordered one and not the other, and almost everyone's saying they shipped the wrong ones out. If you ordered A, you got B. If you ordered B, you got A. So there's a really good chance that I open that box, it's the wrong one, and then I have to deal with uh, Amazon's return process. Yeah, but Amazon's return process is pretty easy. I'm sure it's simple, but it's still going to be like a hassle of like, now I have to print out this it's label. way easier than ours. I've got to put this on the box, and then I've got to send it back, and then hopefully they will send me the right one if they know how to do that. I do love that the return policy for us when it comes to dealing with distributors is so varied and in some cases literal cases when it deals with toys when you get a toy that's literally broken inside the package mm-hmm. they're just like can't help you yeah you can't return a figure you ordered a case we can't return a figure <laughs> you just got to call hasbro yeah you don't you don't call hasbro they don't do anything for stores Apparent, like and that's the thing they're just expecting you to eat it at that point yeah but how is it our problem? Yeah. Like, I think Ingram's return policies are so uh, frustrating and, uh, I don't know. Labor intensive? Yes. Let's say that I honestly think that they do it that way so that you will bail on it and just be like, I don't, I, I, I don't need the $5 back for this book that badly. Yeah. I will just throw it away. You win. Why do you think Boom would send out a press release at 
uh, I guess it's five fifty one for them. Okay. I on a Friday. Did you get a press release? Yeah, I just got an email. Oh, came through. I didn't see exactly what it was, but it was from Anthony. Oh. It flashed across the phone screen. Like, why are you sending those things out? Uh, we do get so, way so many marketing emails. Way too many marketing emails from publishers oh, and man. prospective peoples. Did you get the one today? About the author that wants to do a store signing. <laughs> I did. So I think that and, and ones like it are because you had a thing of Publishers Weekly. Oh, okay. So they just went, oh, bookstore. And so we, we keep getting these ones where it's like, hey, I did this uh, photo book about uh, San Francisco storefronts. Do you want to carry it? Like, no, we're, what, that has nothing to do with us. Yeah, but 100%, the thing I didn't publish weekly was all about comic books. Yeah, but they don't read that part. They just find contact info and they're like, done. You're going to hear about all I, my books. I and if I have them. a book and I'm in your neighborhood, I'm going to let you know that I'm available for a signing. Like, we don't we don't need a thing about uh, a dance, chore- like a choreographer who wrote a book about COVID or something. I don't even understand 100% what it was. It was real difficult to figure out what the book was about. Yeah. But none of it was like a graphic novel. So it's like, no, we don't need to host you for a signing sometime in the second half of this year. Okay, so I just remembered this, and I'm glad that you talked that way because it, it brought up something in my mind. Okay. You would have gotten an email today in regards to this. Um, if I answer the phone, and if you ask for me, I will say I am unavailable. <laughs> okay. I don't say... You know, uh, good afternoon, this is Challengers. Hi, is Patrick there? I'm sorry, I'm unavailable. I don't do it like that. <laughs> right. But I Nothing just say, that transparent. I just say, no, he's unavailable. Right. Because if it was someone you wanted to talk to, it would be somebody who already knows your voice, and they would say, well, hey. So there were a couple times today. One is like, hey, is this Patrick? Yes? Oh, hey, it's Artie. Oh, hey, Artie. <laughs> you know, it's like, right. and that's fine. Sure. Um... But this one, it was a Canadian number. And they're like, hey, is this, hey, Patrick? And I'm like, is this Brian Garside? <laughs> is this Kenny Omega? Uh, and so I answered in a very casual way. Uh-huh. And it was not Brian Garside. No. It's someone from the Toys That Made Us. Oh, okay. And they're trying to explain what they do. I'm like, no, no, I, I, I know what you do. Mm-hmm. I know it's up. And they're like, oh, well... You've watched on Netflix. We also do the show A Toy Store Near You. Mm-hmm. And I go, yeah, I know that. We were actually featured in one <laughs> for almost a second. Uh-huh. You know, the Toy Du Jour had one. Yeah. And, and they're like, yeah, you know, so we're having a hard time finding original toy stores in Chicago. And by that I mean... Current first run toys, not vintage, not used, not um, not toy du jour. So pre owned, like they, they they want something where it's like you carry only new toys yeah, in package. Today, today's toys, right? And they're like, and we didn't realize you guys did, but you sell toys. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, ish, but I mean, <laughs> it's not what we'd call a specialty, you know. But before he was real clear, I'm like, well, there's there's a and I'd said something about, um, he'd, he'd mentioned something, I'd go, oh, I'm real familiar with that because of Ethan Page's toy vlog. Mm-hmm. He didn't know who Ethan Page was. Oh, okay. So I'm like, oh, well, yeah. Well, the toy vlog's over, so good and, luck. And I explained that as well. <laughs> but I'm like, and in fact, we found a toy store kind of around the corner from us, we never existed, called Times Past. He's like, hold on, what is it, Times Past? Click, 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 click. Oh, yeah, no. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We we want a store that's not just gross. that's gross. <laughs> that's open on a whim, mm-hmm. on like occasional nights and weekends. <laughs> but you know, a new modern toy store. I go well, brass tacks. That's not us. No, we have ten feet of wall space for toys, and it's mainly Marvel Legends and um, Marvel Select, Diamond Select. Mm-hmm. But it's stuff that it's, actually it's has Hasbro stuff. It's stuff that has comic books. You know, it's right. some Transformers, it's a tiny bit of J. Joe, but mainly just superheroes. He's like, Is that your rule? I'm like, Yeah, we, we don't want toy lines that don't have 
non-comic properties. Right. We don't have the space for it, frankly. Like, if we had, you know, 30 more feet of wall space, we'd probably be a lot less choosy about what we carry. Yeah. You know, we, we'd need to f fill that out some. I'm really glad that we don't have that kind of space because the profit margin on toys now is absolutely terrible. And trying um, to keep that worry. filled... That comes into play. Trying to keep that filled would be a nightmare. So we were talking a little bit about the, the toy market. And in my head, I'm like, I, do they want to film in the store? Is that what this is about? Because that's where this whole conversation is leading. Right. And I'm not going to say no to that. But I'm like, man, we are not... like. If, any, if Ethan Page ever said, hey, can I do a toy vlog in your store? I would say, yeah, of course, but yeah. this I, isn't for you. I hope you want graphic novels. Yeah, this, this is not <laughs> what you want. Yeah. Well, they uh -huh. make toys now. Okay. They have several lines of action figures. That's cool. Any licenses or is it all? It's all licenses. Cases? Oh, okay. And the one that is selling so great for them mm -hmm. that doesn't even come out until fall but people keep reordering because they keep selling out of all their pre-orders mm -hmm. and this is specifically why i'm like oh yeah i know uh ethan page talks about this property a lot biker mice from mars okay they have basically a line of biker mice from mars ultimate figures okay and and I'm like, you know, action figures are way down for us this year, mm -hmm. but maybe that's because Marvel Legends are digging at the bottom of the barrel and having, like, Puff Adder Build-A-Figures, you know? I mean, you say that, but Patrick, you needed Puff Adder Build-A-Figure pieces. Yeah, but I didn't buy those figures. Um, we just got in some stuff, and, and I, I wish I could figure out why certain things are going and certain things weren't. Like, we got the... Um, Two different waves of Marvel Legends in. We got the Spider-Man retro-carded wave two for the year, which is um, comic book Jessica Drew, comic book Miles Morales. Comic book Jessica Drew in the brief new costume, yeah, which like is all it's black. all alternate costume designs. Like the comic book Miles Morales is... The hoodie one. The hoodie one from the end of the Salad and a Med run. Yeah. Um, that he's out of now. That Cody Ziggler's writing it. Um... But also some animated figures like Tarantula, the Rose, somebody else. Uh, but then like Chasm and Ben Riley from the Spider-Man Beyond series. Yeah. So like that's a weird selection of figures. But like I think we sold out of Tarantula. I mean we sold out of the um, Daredevil the Electra Daredevil immediately. Uh, we sold out of I think so quick that even you couldn't get one. I didn't get one. Uh, Tarantula, I think we sold out of, and maybe something, uh, Miles Morales, maybe. Um, but then we, we also... We sold out of Miles today. We also got in, uh, the Marvels wave for, uh, which is, uh, three MCU figures, uh, the new design Captain Marvel, new design Photon, new design Ms. Marvel, and then, uh, four different, uh, comic characters, uh, Marvel Boy Novar from Young Avengers, Commander Rogers from when Cap was the head of Hammer. Heroes Return Iron Man. Heroes Return Iron Man by Sean Chen. Uh, and then uh, Karnak, I yes. think, is, is the other yeah. one? Uh, is, that, did I, is that four? Did we yeah, get four? No, that's right. Novar, Cap, yeah. Iron Man, Karnak. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, seven, there's usually seven figures in a wave, because right. one figure is double-shipped and doesn't have a build-a-figure piece. Most build-a-figures are six pieces. And, like, a bunch of the non-MCU figures from that wave went right away. Like, not all together, but, like, a bunch of those figures sold. But yeah. the MCU ones, people were more like, hey, wait and see. But, like, remember when we got the uh, Across the Spider-Verse figures? Sure. Nobody cared for weeks. Well, yeah, then the movie came out. And, but and they then were gone everything then. sold but Je uh, a Jessica Drew, which yeah. I think we might still have. Yeah, we, we have one Jessica Drew left. Yeah. So, yeah, I wish I understood why certain things go and certain things don't. Like, because there's, there's characters where I'm like, no one's going to care and then people care. Like, I wouldn't have expected Tarantula to, to, to jump off the shelves like that. Um, but then there's figures like, I thought from the MCU figures... Yeah, he does is jump. Yeah. He tries to stab you with his pointy shoes. Pointy shoes. Um, but then there's like the MCU figures from the Marvel's wave where I'm like, these are great and people are going to buy like sets of these. No one did. I don't know if they have since... Wednesday. Uh, we sold a Ms. Marvel today. Yeah. I 
I, now, I would have assumed, like, at least Photon would go. I don't think she's had, like, a cool figure before. Maybe she has. I don't remember. Photon hasn't really existed in the comics. Yeah. And that's I the, mean, I'm sorry, in the, in the movies. And maybe that's the thing. Like, movie figures, like, won't go until the movie comes out, which is why I really, to not to, to slightly digress, I don't like pre-ordering pops for upcoming films because you never know what characters are going to connect with people. So you're ordering these what figures. What about Meek in a, 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 yeah. a business? What about Secretary so, Meek? Yeah. A thing that, that looked very cool in the, the different concept art and, and the merchandise, but then was a background character in the film for like two but scenes. Now, I'm sure you of all people can appreciate seeing a character's performance in a movie and then immediately wanting to stop back at your own comic book store. I do. To get a Yelena Belova that figure. That looks nothing like the, the character in the movie, but is the Yelena Belova figure that exists, so that's the one I'm going to buy. Um,. Yeah, it, it, honestly, it's a Elena Belova figure that looks like they took Florence Pugh and then they squeezed her like a tube of toothpaste. So she's just stretched out. Um, yeah, but at, at the same time, like, we order this stuff way in advance and it's such a crapshoot as to, like, when we're going to get it and are we going to get it too far in advance where people don't care and then we got to sit on them for months and then maybe people want them when the movie comes out and maybe... We get them too late, and everyone's already made their minds up, and they don't want the figures, or they do, but they got them someplace else. Um, and sometimes we hit the jackpot, and we never get the Eternals figures that we pre-ordered. Yes, sometimes, but then also oh sometimes boy. we never get our Shang Chi figures either. I, I think about that. We got, I think we got, we got Shang Chi figures. There was, a, there was another wave that we didn't get. And we still have Shang Chi figures. There was a, <laughs> we'll a that Thor, probably forever. There was a, a Thor thing from Southern Hobby that just maybe. Never came and out. then we had a bunch of solid cases of figures that Diamond just canceled on us that we ordered like a year and a half ago. Oh my god, so many cases <laughs> of figures. So many. Yeah. A lot of stuff that we pre-ordered from, from Diamond that are Hasbro um, products. And just a, it's just a list of like 15 things where they're like, you're not getting any of that. I'm like, okay. Good to know now. So, while talking to this guy, I was starting to think, what if... What, and also, you know... Uh, Marvel Legends are cheaper at Target than they definitely are at the store. So I'll, I'll say this. Um, not not a lot, though. Well, that's the thing. I, I was looking. I had to do the prices for the figures that we got in. And looking at what we were paying for them, and based on a normal markup, I think we're only like 50 cents over what Target yes, is charging Yes, but you forgot right to add the $50 per case in shipping. Is that how much they cost? I mean, I don't think probably. <laughs> the probably. cases were inside like a... a, a larger box of shipment so i think we're and i don't know if they were doing i think the things they weren't doing shipping on included like toys and stuff what do you mean weren't doing shipping on like southern happy was doing a thing where they weren't charging shipping for like oh as oh, long right. as it yeah, wasn't sure. like boards sure so i think we right we might have made out okay on i this. forgot this was southern happy and not diamond right because we were just talking about all the orders being canceled from diamond yes um, so yeah, in this instance, I think the, the figures we have are... See, I wasn't there when they came in, right. so all of this is just like... You don't know. Hypothetical yeah. to me. They just appeared on the shelf? They just appeared on the shelf. Someone else's work. Um, but anyway, you were saying... Part of me is like, what if we had a product line that nobody else has? Because we got to get it direct from them, mm -hmm. and they're not hitting, like, every comic store. Sure. Maybe they are. I don't know. Who knows? It sounded like they weren't. I was, I'm like, why don't you guys call them the comma? They're, they're an original toy store. Yeah, but I don't think this would fit. Right, but this is before I knew what yeah. would... Because sure. when we were talking about stores. So, uh, they sent me an email. Mm -hmm. uh, and they should have sent it to you as well. Two separate emails. One specifically about biker mice. And one with the other stuff they carry. Okay. And w oddly enough, one of their properties is Mad Balls. I'm like, haha, there actually is a comic book. And he's like, there is? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Uh, they, they do... Or they're going to do Sectaris. Okay. I'm like, oh, I had, I had that comic. Sectars? Yeah, yeah. it's for Marvel, yeah. Sure. So anyway, without <coughs> I don't know if I'd be doing them a disservice by discussing numbers. Mm -hmm. So I wrote them here. That is uh, SRP for a standard figure. Okay. And then our cost. Uh -huh. And you see that is a 30% discount. Okay. So, real bad. Yeah, it's not good. I think in general we're looking, for toys, we're, we're usually looking for at least 35%. Which, I, which is not a good discount no, in general no. for us, but as far as toys are concerned, 
that's about how much of a, of a markup we can do before the prices start to get insane. Yeah, and, and then you want to mark them up even higher to cover the, all the ones that get stolen. <laughs> sure. Our uh, Super 7 figures are going to have to double in price to make up for the ones that get stolen. Uh, Gina's like, do you want me to redo the wall so all the... Uh, steal like the figures people want to steal are better in, in like the expensive figures in, in in eyesight. I'm like, I mean, no, because we can see the GI Joe figures, right? They, <laughs> let's let's put the figures we don't want on the end, like the under the giants, yeah, that we got. I got or three of, and uh -huh. nobody ever bought. No, I'm like let's put those on the end. Get them to go. Uh, so I didn't. Uh, those prices did not make me happy. No. Nope. And I can definitely tell you that this number here mm -hmm. would go up by three. Yeah. Minimum. I wouldn't say minimum, but yeah, three probably. I mean, I, I'm i not doing it for less than... I'm sorry. It'll, it, would, it would go up by two. Yeah. Two, this, two is this what I would This number would go yeah. up by three. Yeah. yeah. That's what I meant to say. Okay, sure. But... Figures look pretty good, and while it's a property I don't give a shit about, there's something about it that's like, well, what if it is a thing that we have? And also, they do a lot of um, promotions for you. Oh, okay. They do a passport situation. Okay. That they would send it to us to give out to people. Okay. If they, and this is for people, you know, all around, whatever, however mm -hmm. they do it. Uh, and they do all sorts of social me media marketing. Okay. And they're like, it's not you do it and tag us and we like it or, sh or forward it. Like, you, you you specifically take photos and send them to us and then we spread them out. I see. We send them out and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, that's kind of good. Sure. So I, it, was, uh, it, was, it was like a maybe 15-minute conversation. Mm-hmm. But it took a while to figure out. I'm like, why are you calling us? <laughs> why is this conversation like, happening right oh, now? And then once it was the brass tacks of a sales know, call. this is a sales call, <laughs> it was effortless to end. Okay. It wasn't, uh, I was like, all right, so there's all the information. I'm going to email you the rest of it. Uh, have a good weekend. Great. Thanks. I'm like, oh, you're not there's pushing gonna... me for a commitment. Right. You're not saying, right so now, what do you think? How many yeah. cases can we put you down for? Yeah. Uh, so, I, honest to God, I'm not opposed to doing it. Okay. But you need to look at the figures. Like, the figures look good, but I don't have I mean, any... I, I, I'll look at the, the figures and, and what was sent, but I would say no, um, just because it's something where I don't know that we have an audience for it, and... Yeah, it's but how not, do we know? But that's the thing. I'm not passionate enough to find out. Right. Like, if it was something where we thought it was awesome, like, oh my God, this is so cool, like... If it's something where we could build an audience for it or we could get behind it in some way, fine. But when it's something where it's just like, I don't know, maybe we're missing the boat on this. It's like, I need more than that. Yeah, I, it's not so much like we're missing a boat on this, but it's like, oh, maybe this is a thing that could make our toy section stand out a little bit more. Yeah. I would rather it be something one or both of us was genuinely excited about. I'm excited about Ethan Page being excited for it. Ethan Page is excited about a lot of things. If I've learned one thing from the Ethan Page toy vlog, it's that there is a lot of things that he has a nostalgia for. Oh, dude, that's sick. Mm -hmm. I did like that... Um, the little documentary? The little video package yeah. that AEW did for him as a wrestler. Yeah. It makes me care about him a little bit more as a sure. wrestler. I don't understand what his character is anymore. No. <laughs> like, we just did a thing where he... Uh, had his contract won by Matt Hardy, and he was just, like, grumpy. And then the next thing is, like, him coming out of the back to challenge Maxwell Jacob Friedman for the AEW title in his hometown of Hamilton. Uh, and that's it? Like, that's his character now? Is His character is the, Hamilton. The guy who wrestled in Hamilton for the title? Don't worry. As soon it's as they're done weird. with this, this Canadian track, he'll be back to being grumpy. I guess. Well, I was grumpy this week because I spent a couple of days working on a mid-year retailer check-in mm -hmm. for David Harper and Sketch.com. Yeah. And I always try to really think about the answers to these questions. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I did it over a couple of days. Uh-huh. 
And the way his questions work, and he had a lot of questions this time. Sure. He, and, sometimes he has a lot of questions. Yeah. So I like do quick bullet point answers for most of them as a way to remind myself when I get back to it mm -hmm. what I wanted to do. But sometimes my answers are so in-depth but for a, a different point that I'm like, oh, this whole paragraph could go up, answer this question here. Sure. That kind of thing. But one of the things that made me do was um, I had just done the June numbers. Mm -hmm. So it's literally half the year. Right. So I could see where we're at. Right. And his first question is, how has the year been? <laughs> and my answer was, we're down tens of thousands of dollars from this point last year. Yep. And then I had a parenthetical where I'm like, okay, look, it's barely $20,000, but 20000 is still tens of thousands. Yep. And saying tens of thousands is way more dramatic. Yeah. So I went with it. Sure. But his question, his follow-up was, do you mean in gross sales, in net sales, in, uh, like, sales to expenditures ratio? Right. Like, all right, I haven't done that much of right. the, the the year. Just It's just... In sales. Yeah. Yeah. So not necessarily, like, of profit or of... Right. But here's the thing. I guarantee you we are less profitable sure. at this point. Sure. We... I don't understand how Shopify does their billing, all right? We get mm -hmm. two major Shopify billing hits per month. Right. They are not, as you would hope, two weeks apart. No. They are, like, last last week we got one, uh, basically we had one uh, two days ago, and then, like, five days before that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'm like, oh, because, and I, I, let's face it, from a business standpoint, the Independence Day holiday really fucked with us mm -hmm. because of the way weekend sales money gets into our accounts via Shopify versus from Square. Mm -hmm. And then having Independence Day be on a Tuesday, like Monday holidays are bad enough because it pushes things out. It pushes, I can't do a lot of the payments that I would do on a Monday because on, on a holiday Monday because the banks are closed. Sure. But when it's a holiday Tuesday, mm -hmm. it pushes everything even further back. Yeah. So I and several of the people that do automatic billing at the start of the month did it early mm -hmm. because of the Independence Day holiday. <laughs> yeah. So early billing taking away from money that hasn't quite hit yet. So I thought Shopify was getting us out of the way. Right. No, that was just the late month one they did much later okay and then within five more days there's the other one right the only good thing about that is that the shipping aspect couldn't be that high mm -hmm. because it hadn't been that long sure but i really i, I hate and it brian garson explained how this why this happened it's not even a it's not a shopify specific thing but i hate that when people pay us pay for shipping you know, they have, they have an order, they place mm -hmm. an order, they pay $6 shipping, we get the money for shipping. Two weeks later, Shopify is like, all right, well, here's what you owe for shipping for these last two weeks. Mm -hmm. We wish they would take it out when yeah, we were just, actually just processing keep it. the order. Don't even give it to us. Right. Just take it. It's yours. Don't give it to us and make us give it back. Yeah. That's such a frustrating bookkeeping aspect. And it I is. understand why it's done. I just don't like it. No. And honest to God, it's Almost, if it wasn't uh, with the with the extra work of having to specifically pay attention to every Penguin Random House and Simon and Schuster invoice mm -hmm. because of their billing cycles and how you get like potentially a, a dozen a day. every every single email from Penguin Random House. Is three emails. Right. One when it's placed, one when it's billed, one when it's shipped. Uh, yeah, well, so one when it's placed. Yeah. One when they've 
processed it. Yeah. One when it's shipped, which is also, I think, when it's invoiced. Yeah. So it's a lot of repetitive. And, and I get it. You need tracking information or whatever. Sure. But I have to go through each email and be like, no, I've already recorded this one. I don't need to record this amount because it's it would be duplicate or whatever. Right. But it's almost worth it to me to start looking at every Shopify order and immediately pulling that money aside. Like, sure. oh, here's the $6 or for whatever that. we paid for the shipping. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, but that would drive me insane. I'm sure. I mean, the, amount, a lot of, of orders. the amount of paperwork I do now versus pre-pandemic sure. is disgusting. Literally, I'm disgusted by it. But that is, uh, that's that's the way it works, man. It is. That is how it works now. And I don't like it. Nope. But one of the questions David had was, aside from product, mm -hmm. what are things that make your job harder now? What does he mean aside from product? Like, like um variant covers oh, or sure, sure. the physicality of the books yeah so i'll see if i can remember what i put because as i was was typing this out i just kept getting more and more answers <laughs> like, oh one of the things that what's something that annoys patrick personally drives me insane <laughs> is the complete inconsistency in title invoicing via publisher oh yeah <laughs> specifically like it just just a, on, on a general level, uh -huh. everything on a diamond invoice is all caps. Right. Fine. Everything on a lunar invoice, all caps. Fine. Penguin Random House depends on the publisher. Yeah, I really mm -hmm. dislike that Penguin Random House, as a distributor, does not have an overall rule of how things are titled and then how those titles are conveyed to Oh, accounts. my gosh. I'm just getting started. So, Marvel... All caps. Mm -hmm. Dark Horse, IDW, mixed case. Yep. Fine. But what also makes that even worse is how they deal with covers. Marvel Comics, let's say Amazing Spider-Man 26. Mm -hmm. So it's Amazing Spider-Man 26. That's cover A. Right. And then everything else is by artist. So Amazing Spider-Man 26 Ed McGinnis variant. Mm -hmm. Amazing Spider-Man 26, Jim Chung Hellfire Gala variant. Mm -hmm. Or Miss Minutes variant. Like, the word variant is in every variant cover. Right. And then the egregious ones are Star Wars, where it's Return of the Jedi 30th Anniversary uh, Jabba's Palace variant. Mm -hmm. d d you forgot to put the artist in there as well. Oh, you're, I, I did. Yeah, Re I see Return did. of the Jedi, yeah. 30th anniversary. Chris, Chris Rouse. Rouse. Jabba's Palace variant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, right? So that's that's Marvel. DC's format for everything is title, CVR, and then a, a, a letter. Okay. A, B, C, D. Mm. And then the artist's Full name, first and last name, mm -hmm. for the A cover. For everything else after that, it'll be that same format, but then it'll say, you know, John Cassidy, um, how do they describe their paper? Cardstock, cardstock variant. variant. Mm -hmm. So then it's cardstock variant, foil variant, and then uh, INC, incentive, 50, and then artist full name, and then cup for the mm -hmm. for the uh, incentive covers. Sure. That's DC. Right. Dark Horse Ugh. does. Dark Horse is the worst. Uh, the worst. Uh, uh, what's what's it? Uh, uh, all the, eight the, eyes. The Great British Bump Off. Okay, the Great British Bump Off, number five, parenthesis C V R A. End parenthesis. Parenthesis, artist, full name. Right. So that's how they do theirs. Which, and I just want to note, 
they put the Great British Bump off, which drives me insane. That Dark Horse, through their listings on Penguin Random House, do not remove the from a title, which any normal human being uh, who speaks English and reads English would say, well, the title on the invoice should just be Great British Bump Off. No, the Great British Bump Off. It's, it's the not oddly the, pedestrian d- life of et cetera, et cetera. Diamond does it too, like the exalted or... Rarely though. Like if yeah, you get Great but, British Bump Off from Diamond, I, I would bet you it is Great British Bump Off on the invoice. Diamond usually takes the word the out of every title, even if it's in the middle. Which, I fine. That's but, great. <laughs> but like the, the exalted is always under the... I think it's an exception. Like, yeah. in general. As yeah, a, no, it, that's what it yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, so IDW does it even more annoying. It'll be... Oh, and also, I forgot to mention that they use colons and dashes everywhere. Yeah. So every Star Wars book is Star Wars colon Darth Vader. Star Wars colon Yoda. Mm-hmm. Star Wars colon High Republic. Hyphen. D- hyphen the Blade. Mm-hmm. Hate the colons, hate the hype. Everything is Gwen Stacy, colon, spider, uh, ghost spider. Right. I, I hate the colons. I hate them. IDW will do Star Trek, colon, Deep Space Nine, colon, the, and I'm sorry, just one colon. Uh, Star Trek, colon, Deep Space Nine, The Dog of War, number five. The word cover spelled out for A. Mm-hmm. So, C O B E R A, parenthesis, artist last name, and parenthesis. Mm-hmm. For every other cover in that list, they replace the full word cover with the full word variant. Yeah, so it's cover A, variant B. Yeah. Which is dumb. And every uh, retailer incentive is just cover RI, mm-hmm. or variant RI, and then parentheses 10 or parentheses 25. 25. Whatever the ratio of the variant is. I hate all of it so much because there is no industry standard. Yeah, nothing standardized. And there, I have e- to even edit... Within, and this is what kills me. Even within a distributor, there's no standard. Like, Lunar and Diamond seem like they have a handle on their data as far as like how they're inputting it and what they go by. But Penguin Random House seems to be the Wild West as far as like three different publishers doing it three different ways... And Pierre, it's just going like double thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, we don't care. Whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. And Marvel, up until recently, only used the artist's last name, which I prefer. Yeah. Here's one of the reasons that I don't like all this extra information is because more than half of the people looking at this information are looking on their phones. These titles are so fucking long. When you add first names, last names, cardstock variant. Mm-hmm. So I edit everything down. So it'll say Batman, number 136, CVRA Jimenez. Sure. CVRB Zadarsky. Right. I don't, if it's, sometimes if it's foil, I'll put foil. Other times, I don't. Because mm-hmm. if people are really that interested in what the cover looks like, go look it up. <laughs> sure. I'll give you the name if it's there, but I don't do first and last names except Jim Lee. I'll leave Jim Lee. Jay Lee, I'll leave Jay Lee. Mm-hmm. In Hook Lee, I'll leave those first names because there's so many Lees. Sure. But for the most part, and also you don't have to put uh, Stanley Art Germ Lau. <laughs> One or the other. Art Germ is fine. And so I edit it down. Right. But I spend so much time each week editing these. So, A, our. Release information on the website, on the screens in the store, on the the mat on the store, it's consistent. Yeah. If it was all different cases, would that would gross. be it would be super gross. Yeah, it would not be unreadable, but it would be less fun to read. And and so all of the like the graphic novels, I get rid of TP or GN and the dot after Val. You know, I, I sure uh, epic collections are epic call, and then the title right. It's just trying to make everything legible. Otherwise, the lines on our... I mean, there was a point when I wasn't doing the individual covers. Yeah. But 
now because there's so fucking many covers yeah. per book, people do should at least get to know what we're getting. Sure. But I just if there was I'm willing to change the way our data looks to match whatever the industry consensus is. Mm -hmm. But right now, there is no consensus. Nope. So there was a time when I used to redo all of it to keep it out of all caps. Oh, sure. But then I thought, like, I'm wasting my time. <laughs> yes. So I switched to full caps. But, man, why... I just, especially as you pointed out, Penguin Random House doing everything different for every publisher... Come on. Yeah. Just you can set the standard. You can tell them what to do. Yeah, I if you're receiving the data and you have to pass it along to your customers, much like you, Patrick, end up being an interface in that to make it standardized for your customers, PRH could be doing the same thing. They could be making it standardized for their customers, i.e. us. And they don't even have to do the work themselves. They just demand it from their yeah, publishing partners. Just tell put it in this format. Yeah, when you're submitting the data for your catalogs, do it in this format. It, it's not hard. And Marvel just switched to using artists' first names as well recently. Yeah. And I thought, no, you're going backwards. <laughs> sure. You're doing it wrong. Why did you start doing that? You didn't used to do that. Don't do that. And, and I know how often, like... Uh, other other publishers, not Marvel, will put the incentive quantity in the title. Mm -hmm. Marvel doesn't do that. No. Remember, you can get at it through like an online invoice, but you don't get it in the pre-delivery report, and you don't get it on like some. Yeah, and the pre-delivery report is where we do most of our breakdown from yep. because that's where we get the information in advance. We don't want to wait until the last minute to do this stuff. No. I mean, yesterday I was doing all the invoicing stuff for the books that come out in two weeks from this past Wednesday. Okay. Not next week, but the week after. Gotcha. And that's how far in advance we start doing this stuff. Sure. But, yeah, it, it is available elsewhere, but the pre-delivery reports need to have that information. And I remember you, you said to me, hey, uh, where do you get this information from? And I said, oh, I have to look up every single book to find sure. out what the cover is. Yeah, I would suggest looking at the invoice. Uh, for those books because you can just scroll down then and be like that one's a 25 that's a 50 whatever it's a little faster it is but then i also still need to and i get this wrong sometimes looking at the numbers we ordered think is this for the shelf or is this for a subscriber i'm, I'm curious why you would need to note that ahead of time like because on the actual uh because i i'll Every Sunday, I go through all of the invoices and just cross off the list anything that is actually for a subscriber versus anything that's also for the shelf. Yeah, but the emails have already so, I mean, why, gone out. Why not leave an email in? I mean, you don't know for sure anyway. Because well, I don't want... At that point, there's no guarantee that we can get a specific cover sure. for somebody. But I mean, by that point, we're not adding anything for anybody. Yeah. Like, by the time those emails go out, if someone's like, oh, put me down for this, it's like, no, that was three weeks ago. See, we say that, but we never say that. We always try to get the book for the person. We'll try, but we'll also mention, like, look, this is probably not going to happen now. Like, and then try and impress upon people, this is a learning experience. In the future, yeah. please check the FOC reports. Please I'm, check the Friday FOC emails that Molly sends out. Please I'm check okay, the monthly catalog reports. I'm okay with... If it's once in a while... Putting titles in a new release list that we're not carrying for the shelf just as a way to say people, hey, this is the thing that was available. You could have ordered it. Okay. But I don't like doing it with covers I know we're not going to have available for the shelf. Okay. I just, I'm, I'm trying to think of ways that you could have less busy work. What was, uh, yeah, somebody, I made the same joke twice this week, but it was a, di it was the same punchline, but a different joke. Somebody mm -hmm. on Wednesday was asking, the best way to uh, rid themselves of their comics. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, I know. I yeah. know. Uh, and I just uh, reached in the drawer and handed them a, a matchbook. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did that again today. Oh, yeah. So uh, we had somebody, uh, a club member was in with a, a comic fan of theirs. They're like, yeah, now uh, I'm taking it to all the stores in the area. So we're going to go to another store. I'm like, oh, here, can you do me a favor? 
Uh, bring these with you. And gave them the matches. Oh, gotcha. Okay. To burn the buildings down. That was that was the joke. Okay. That is the hilarity. Hilarity. Of uh, uh, can't think of the phrase I want. Not commerce, but uh, competition. I see. Yeah. We got in the mail today. Yay, mail! A full copy of mail call of Thunder and Lightning by Kimberly Wang from Silver Sprocket. Oh, cool! Not an arc. Not an advanced reader copy. A book. The actual book. A book book. And it's because they have this behind the counter at their retail store in California. Mm-hmm. Being like, hey, this is coming up. And everybody's like, not everybody. Like, so many people want to see it. They're like, can I look at that? They're like, we, sh- we should get this in the hands of some people. Can I look at that? Uh, when I'm done. Mm. This, is, this is part of a bit on the podcast. Not oh, a bit, okay. but, a, but a segment. So first, I'm going to tell you what it's about. Oh, thank you. Corporate Magical Girls and the Apocalypse. Love it. In a world where pop media meets military power, two idle super soldiers... uh, What what is Maki Ito? The disgraced idol? Uh, The fired idol. The fired idol. Two idle superstars are locked in a world-ending conflict on behalf of their corporate nations. Battles blast across a dying land, both sides convinced of their own righteousness. Ragnarok looms on the horizon. Yet... uh, Magni and Demo, young icons created for the sole purpose of eliminating the other, find their closest reflection in their opposite. Now, completing their mission means destroying the one who understands them the most. Sounds great. Debut author Kimberly Wang crafts a thrilling two-tone sci-fi graphic novel, growing the seeds of hope from the gravel of apocalypse. So, this book is on FOC this weekend okay so if you are a patron listener and you're listening to this saturday night or sunday morning you can still add this book to your list everybody else you got to take your chances <laughs> uh but look at look at how gorgeous this is i would like to uh, i'm showing it i'm showing you okay. just I, no i want you to like i'm still directing this conversation okay. so i want you to like what are what are your first it instincts? looks great yeah uh, it is a $14 graphic novel. Uh-huh. Silver Sprocket Rules. Okay. Uh, so, here you may now look, uh, look with your eyes now. And uh, I was talking to Avi today from Silver Sprocket, mm-hmm. spurred on by this. So I reached out and said, hey, we just got this in the mail. They gave us a, a if you t- turn it over to the back. Okay. Oh, no, there's an uh, inside back cover. Uh, that They give us a sticker of that as well. Oh, cool. Um, and I think this book looks great, and it looks like, uh, you know, like... If you like Flavor Girls, I think this is definitely right up that alley. Yeah, exactly. Or even Magical Girl Beatdown, maybe. More Flavor Girls. More, more, <laughs> more for the the art and the style. Sure, okay. But a little bit of everything. But at the same time, uh, Avi's like, hey, I'm real late to this party by a couple years, but I just started listening to your podcast. I find it really informative. Oh, cool. And... I didn't have a heart, the heart to do the whole, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> like I normally do with people. You said it in, inside your brain. Yeah, oh, I did. Sorry. So uh, we've got a handful of these on order, mm-hmm. and we have... I mean, we carry Silver Sprock and stuff Right, and we have... Like almost as a rule. A uh, couple pre-orders? Yes, this many pre-orders. Uh-huh. So this many for the shelf. Yeah. But I feel like since I, it's I'll an FOC... Yeah, sure. okay. Yeah. But I don't know which of you does Lunar. Uh, I do. Also, speaking of Lunar, mm-hmm. uh, Drawn and Quarterly is now through Lunar. I heard. And I went to go change them over in the... Uh, the settings? Yeah. For managed comics? But it's it's not offered yet. So that's usually a thing where you have to shoot a quick Ask. email to Brian and go, hey, can you make that something that's uh, alterable? Like, that was the thing for Distillery, Distiller. was that we had to go, hey, this is happening. And then within, like, 24 or 48 hours, it's sure. done. Okay. But also, uh, Wizards of the Coast was in there. Oh, okay. And I didn't change it. I changed it because we have Wizards of the Coast set for Diamond. Sure. But I changed that to PRH. Great. Because that's where we get all of our... It is, yeah. Yeah, because Southern Hobby isn't a choice. Sure. Well, that's the thing. Like, Wizards of the Coast, you, you, you would count them for D&D books or... Right. Um, like, some of the magic art book stuff. But, yeah, that's that's all we would really pre-order. And, and then... Right. But we've switched all that pre-order stuff to PRH. Right. But, like, that would really only become, like, I don't, one. Um, they don't like, populate reorders the same way? Well, no, I was going to say one. Um, I don't think we really get any pre-orders through Managed Comics for any of the D&D stuff. Okay. 
Uh, and two, I don't know if, if Wizard of the Coast falls under the FOC carts. Oh, so, all right. It, it has nothing to do it with... It may not. So stocky would be all of the... Stocky is a different thing. Would be the reorder generation quantity. Right. And, okay, and we so, do have Wizard of the Coast set for PRH in stock. Okay, so that that's why I switched over specifically for a reorder. No, component, this would just be for when... Reorders. When we have special orders or when it's on FOC okay. or initial order. But again, I don't think it's on technically... FOC or initial order no, for the it, way it's, peerage does got it. it. Got it. I just didn't want to do a thing like that and not tell you that yeah, I did it. No, it's fine. And I mean, the good news, though, is that even doing that means that there's no chance, I think, of it showing up in a Diamond catalog if there's a pre-order for it or yeah. something. So you yeah. won't accidentally order a copy from Diamond where we get a worse discount. Gotcha. And it comes later or if at all. Uh, it's amazing to me how large that Lunar Publisher list is. It's getting bigger all the yeah, time. Yeah, it's getting bigger all the time. Yeah, but I, I appreciated us getting it. And this was addressed to you and me specifically. Oh, neat. Uh, but I appreciate them believing in this book enough to just send copies of the book. <laughs> That's very cool. And, uh, they sent an email about it today, and there's a PDF in that email. But I'm like, don't need that. Got this. Yeah, I mean, and certainly for, for stuff that's more art-oriented, like the stuff that Silver Sprocket does, it's always nice to see what the finished product is going to look like. And this like, was delicately wrapped yeah. in... Uh, matching color cray paper yeah silver sprocket stuff it's i can get just like an arc or something from dark horse because i know how dark horse publishes things right. i know what it's going to look like when it's done but every silver sprocket book is different right it's it would be like getting an arc of a rachel bard thing like yeah yeah okay i see the the this image on the screen what is this gonna look like when you produce it because that's a lot of what makes people want to buy it is you know how cool is this going to look on the shelf and this looks pretty cool. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, it's a really good package. I like what they do. Yeah. Uh, this reminds me of... of um, I didn't go looking. We have next week's DC product, but the... The, Ivan, ne the neon cover? Yeah. For Night Terrors number one? Yeah, you heard about that? Yeah, uh, DC or Lunar sent out an email basically saying that there was a printing error with it and they would like us to uh, destroy, destroy all it. copies and they'll be s sending out a replacement, which I thought, that's great for a bi-weekly book. To basically let us know that the replacement copies will be coming in in a little over two weeks. Yeah. So it's like, so if you were someone who wanted to read Night Terrors number one and you had pre-ordered the Neon variant, you don't get to read it now. You get Maybe to read it when the sheet comes, comes out. No, I think I think it's coming out like I think the week of two. Okay. I think. They really got to rush it to get that done. They do. Look, there's sketches in the back and everything. Yeah, there's a little process stuff in the back. It's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um. Night Terrors, this was this was the first week of Night Terrors releasing, uh, because it was First Blood, and then it was also the issue ones for the first uh, quarter of, of the books that are coming out that have miniseries. I had someone come in today asking for, I don't know what they call it, but it's the new Superman book. I think it's on issue five. And I said, do you mean Superman Lost? What? No, the Superman book. Oh, Superman. Yeah, it's called Superman. Issue five. Mm -hmm. But then they found Night Terrors and said, what is this? Mm -hmm. And also... I'm glad they asked you and not me. Uh, so I explain it and, and I try to break it down. But trying to explain to somebody that DC is halting their publication of the regular superhero line for two months and replacing it with this. And then saying, here's a checklist. And having them say, what is the difference between any of these books? See how this one says Batman? That's the Batman one. Uh -huh. This is the Black Adam one. This is the Green Lantern yeah. one. Like, okay, but do I have to read them all in this order? You don't have to read any of them except for the Night Terrors First Blood. Mm -hmm. Just call it Zero. Yeah, very weird. Or or just call it Issue One. Yeah. Of a five-issue issue yeah, series. Fine. <laughs> How about that? And then those. Why, as always, does it have to be so needlessly convoluted? Why? Why, superhero publishers, can you not get out of your own goddamn way for one single event? Uh, insane to me. Like, uh, the, the stupid Ghost Rider Wolverine thing is two issues of Ghost Rider, two issues of Wolverine, and then two and Alpha, Alpha and Omega, and Omega and which are basically not, number ones each. Why not just do three Ghost Riders and three Wolverines, and then parts one through six? Yeah. Why does it have to be its own two separate number ones? A number one that's the final issue of a series. Why is Captain America have a 750 and a finale? Oh my god. Insane. 
Captain and, America and, Grand and, Final! And Captain America 750 is a conclusion to two different series. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh. But anyway, you're talking about the first week of sales of Night, night Terrors. Yeah, so... I you never pronounce the K. Knight t- Terrors. Um, <laughs> it doesn't need two T's. Uh, I'm pretty sure it does. So anyone who's listened to an episode of Contest of Challengers Comics Industry Business Podcast has probably heard me in particular and us in general talk about how unenthused we were sales-wise for Night Terrors. Patrick really ended up enjoying the uh, the issues that he read via previews. Uh, I read a couple issues and decided that I had learned everything I needed to know about Night Terrors. But regardless, the numbers were already locked in for all this stuff by the time we actually experienced them. And due to a lack of returnability, another thing you've probably heard us mention once or twice, we ordered very low on Night Terrors. And this was the week where we actually got them on the shelves beyond just pre-order numbers and got to see, like, are people responding to this? Uh, I haven't worked the last two days. I assume you looked at the New This Week section at some point on, on today. Is the, that where we keep Waldo? The third day of release. Uh, how does the Night Terror section look, Patrick? How does the what? Night Terrors section look. You're not doing... Knight to Terrors. Um, most Knight to Terrors are gone. Yeah. Uh, I would have liked them... Keep in mind, though. Yes. I know you I know you want them to have, like, stayed on the shelf a little bit longer. Till Monday, I think was what I was looking for. if you remember... Week three of the new fifty two. Uh huh. People stop caring. Like this is not. Yeah, this is issue one, week one. Yeah. So uh, every book drops by issue two, and of two. Uh, yeah, of two in general. But also, um, as these events go on, the first week it's very like I'm excited about this, and then people are going to read them, and their excitement may go up, it may stay the same, it may go down. And that means that on subsequent weeks, when they're looking at, you know, issue one of a, another seven series and then another seven series, they might, by the time you're on week three, you might say, I don't know that I need all these number ones. I think I've I've gotten enough connected to terrors in my brain for this month. Two weeks from this week, mm-hmm. there's only five Knight Terrors books coming out as opposed to normal six because there's no Knight Terrors 2. So it's five character books. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. There were six this first week because of Knight Terror Zero. Okay, so first there's, blood, and the next week there's seven? No, there's six. six because there's five because character of, ones, and, and then, then the issue, issue one, one. And then the week after that's It's just five. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I thought uh, you meant for a second that two was, like, moved around in the schedule, and I'm like, no, no I know that the, the, the Neon Ink one FOC is on a different week, but I, don't, I think they are. I think it's but funny. also, that week... Of releases mm-hmm. for Marvel and DC? Yeah. Terrible. Oh, great. Mar- I, Marvel Once has, again. <laughs> I, I would have thought it was a fifth week, uh, looking there, at the Marvel look, list. So there was an announcement that I read on Popverse where there's something going on at one of Marvel's printers Oh, that has led to a no. bunch of books getting no, delayed. That means they're going to catch up. A week or two weeks. Okay. So um, it, means that- it was nothing that I looked at and went, oh, no, that's going to kill us not having that. But it was like... Avengers Beyond, Cosmic Ghost Rider, uh, Wolverine, No, I'm I think. just worried about when they catch up. Oh, yeah. It's going to be like a double ship week. Yeah, but it wasn't that many books. So, I mean, it would still have been a bad week, but it would have probably been a less bad week for Marvel. But, yeah, Night Terrors came out. It seems like people bought it um, more than I had maybe thought, but, but still, as, as much as I'd hoped. One <laughs> thousand percent, we're not reordering anything no, unless nothing. somebody specifically requests a special order for an issue. Yeah. As long as it's in stock at Lunar, we'll, we'll definitely special order it for you. But no, we will not be restocking any Night Terror stuff. We we were impressing this upon people months ago when we were saying pre-order this because we will not be ordering a lot of yep. extras. And that still holds true. Uh, a two-month event does not have... Legs of any kind. Legs of any kind. So while I will probably you know go higher on the World's Finest Teen Titans, number one, because I think I can sell that. It's a six-issue miniseries, so... I, Assume I can sell it for at least two or three months. A two-month event is immediately going to be forgotten about by the industry by the time we hit September. Mostly because September is a million new DC books. Oh, so many. I mean, they're good. So, they're yeah, good yeah. books I'm excited about, but that's going to put Night Terrors even more in the rear But imagine people. if they had these other two months to spread those out over. I really wish they would. I mean, I, mostly because I can sell those right now. Yeah. The only advanced... 
book I read this week, and it was today, mm-hmm. was Ribbon Queen number two. Yeah. Real good. I don't get those. Uh, re- if you don't, you didn't get any AWA emails? No. no. I think you you are happier that way. AWA? Yeah, I mean, yeah. the only stuff I would really check out would be the Garth Ennis stuff in general. I don't and it, and it's interesting because, like, the, the email heading is like, hey, um, what what was their Cullen Bunn, Mike D. Data book, Red Zone? Okay. Was it Red Zone? I think so. Uh, Red Zone's collected, and I looked at it, and I go, I wonder if there's Ribbon Queen in this email. <laughs> so I open it, and just at the very bottom, the very, very bottom, is Ribbon Queen 2. I'm like, oh! So I read it. It's real good. That's it's great. It's real... It's so creepy. I like There's, when those guys work together. Yeah, man. Love it. Uh, anybody who was on the fence about it. I mean, it's gross. Mm-hmm. Of course but, it's gross. But, I mean, it's it's still, like... I don't know. The, the specific... I can't, I don't know how to describe this, but getting to watch the thing happen mm-hmm. is so visually well done. Oh, cool. That it's like, oh man, it's creepy. Um, we had a, a visit from a, a good friend of ours from Hollywood in this week. Yeah. And this person wrote the first draft for the upcoming Fantastic Four movie. Yes. And while there's NDAs and things they oh can't my tell us. <laughs> yeah. I think I saw occasionally as as talk would veer into the MCU, I saw a red dot that was just like moving around on his <laughs> chest. And I was like, all right, I'll change the subject. Uh it was very interesting the things that he could tell us mm-hmm. just about the um just what it's like to kind of work in that yeah, environment. Exactly, exactly like that. We, yeah, exactly. We, we would not have pressed for specific details. And even if we had, there's somebody else who's writing the current draft. So anything you're going to be told is probably like, was true at one point, may not be true in the future. Um, but just getting to hear, like, what is it like in that environment as a writer? It, like, it was, it was that, fascinating how that to work? hear how that process goes and uh, how they even got the job yeah, and in honestly, the first place. Like, Hearing how the sausage is made for a lot of this stuff is is definitely a great way for, as the saying goes, you know, being disgusted. <laughs> um, but in this instance, like, everything you're saying was like, oh, that actually sounds really cool. Like, it sounds more creative than people maybe give it credit for. Yeah. Like, the things that, that like, my perception as somebody who's seen all these movies and doesn't really follow, like, industry gossip but tries to at least be sort of aware of how the world works saw things as a very top down like they they at Marvel Studios the 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 executive level of it all has a very top down this is what we're doing and the writers just sort of execute that and then hearing from someone who's worked on that it sounds more collaborative and more like um what you'd want out of this sort of corporate IP stuff where someone smart at the top is like surprise me like Give me your take on it. Tell me something that you think is going to be cool. And then collectively we'll figure out a way to make that cool together. Yeah. And that was neat to hear. Yeah, it's interesting to know what Marvel wants versus what Marvel is willing for you to give. Yeah. But in general, it just it, it was cool to hear that one person's experience. And I don't want to make it sound like this is everyone's experience. Right. Marvel Studios is a very big machine with a lot of very small cogs in it so one in particular cog had a pretty cool story about what it was like to yeah. do that and we like n- nothing was spoiled for us we don't know no. any big secrets no. uh i i made some joke requests like oh please tell me <laughs> that uh i want to pick a character that never came up uh please tell me that basilisk is in the movie or is in your draft somewhere uh-huh. and the amount of times that i was that was met with uh actually <laughs> like i can't say if basilisk is in the movie but i can say that i pitched to have basilisk <laughs> at a certain point and also none of that is true because yeah. basilisk is not the character I yeah used. basilisk is a placeholder but for there were actual for, characters that were, but there were a couple different characters that were uh-huh. Uh, that were actually that you, was you think would be too deep cut or weird, and it was like that was under discussion. Yeah, for at least a uh, minute. We pitch. <laughs> like, oh man, yeah. So that was actually no like, bad ideas. Really exciting to uh, 
it, it was fun. It was a fun conversation. It was fun to learn it was. stuff. Yeah, it's it's a part of the industry that, that you and I usually never get to really interact with, like, yeah. in that serious a way. Like, th- what Marvel Studios does has a huge impact on our business, specifically in our industry in general, and it's still pretty much a black box as far as, like, how is that stuff happening? What is it like? Um, and you can read, you know, sanitized versions of stuff that gets out to different media blogs or, or interview sites or whatever. But actually getting to talk to, uh, you know, a friend or an acquaintance or whatever that that has done that and can, <laughs> it can be a little bit... Friend, acquaintance. Yeah, friend for Patrick, acquaintance for Dal. Um, is is cool, is, is a way to, to see it in a new light. That was neat. Just like the experience of this podcast is experiencing the business of selling comics in a new light on a weekly basis. Thanks for listening. And keep reading comics. This has been Contest of Challengers. Thanks for listening. Keep reading comics. Challengers is located at 1845 Northwestern Avenue in the Bucktown neighborhood of Chicago. 773 773- Two seven eight zero one five five. Keep up to date with new releases and events at challengerscomics.com and help fund this podcast at patreon.com slash challengers.